from the Denver Broncos Media Center. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight with Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright. All right, welcome to Broncos Country tonight, breaking down the Broncos win over the New York Giants 27-13 in the season opener. And Ben, it's great to get a win here in September. I know a lot of Broncos fans were a little uneasy because the Broncos have had their struggles in September. But what does this say about the current state of the team? Because it really felt like everybody, coaching, players, everybody across the board had a hand in this one. Yeah, I think they did. Um, there were no special teams gaffes, always a, always a huge plus. Uh, the defense... Uh, did their job. Von Miller came back, got a couple of sacks. We haven't really talked about that a uh, whole heck of a lot, but Von Miller had a, a pretty pretty darn good game. Um, you know, I thought the secondary played pretty well outside of one or two lapses. Um, the linebackers were playing well. Josie got in there, got the forced fumble. I thought Alexander Johnson played well. Um, uh, yeah, it really was a, a team effort across the board. And then the, on the offensive side, the ball was distributed pretty evenly across the board. You know, you look at the, the running backs, you had a similar number of snaps. Uh, Melvin did more with his, but, you know, it's it's whatever. Um, the, the the wide receivers and tight ends, the ball was distributed pretty evenly. I mean, Noah Fan I think, led the way, but everybody else, uh, you know, got on there a little bit. I think people would like to see a little more out of Cortland Sutton as he's coming back. Maybe that will happen in the next game with Judy out. But, uh, yeah, it was just pretty evenly distributed across the board. A well-done team effort. Yeah, and, and they, they had a good coaching plan in place. And, and uh, uh, despite a few penalty errors, that's something we're just not accustomed to with Vic Fangio. Vic Fangio is a coach, and he even said it after the fact that, you know, hey, too many penalties in this one. You had a Draymond Jones unnecessary roughness. You had a Mike Ford on special teams with a hit out of bounds. So those are things that they'll look to clean up. And, and Vic Fangio, of course, has been one of those coaches that really values, and they coach these guys not to make those kinds of mistakes. So the, there are definitely a few things to clean up. But, I mean, overall, I think that what jumped out to me was the confidence level of the team, especially on the offensive side of the ball. It's not a surprise to see the defense be confident because this is a team that's worked together. It's a group that's worked together for a really long time. But on the offensive side, you're like, okay, what's going to look like with Teddy Bridgewater? How are they going to respond to him? What's the play calling going to look like with him out there? And I, th I feel like we got some answers. We got some specific answers on what they're going to try to do this year. Yeah, what we always say around here, confidence begets confidence, right? You come out looking like you are you know what you're doing, you, and you execute, and that gives you the confidence that you can continue to go execute, right? And that's what happened with the Broncos. They came out there, they executed as intended, and then they turned around and just kept on executing. And when they didn't get it on third down, third down they believed they could get it on fourth. They had a fourth and seven they converted. You know, yeah. they, when, they, when they didn't get it on third down, they just – Kept going back there and kept doing. So I, you know, I think that uh, I think that's right, and I think this was a confidence boosting game overall. They hadn't won a game in September in the Fangio era. That that's off the schneid now. We don't have to talk about that anymore. Um, they, they went out and they generated uh, turnovers. Uh, in, you know, in the opening game, they got that Von Miller, got a couple of sacks. We don't have those questions anymore. What are the questions that we have now? We had a lot of we had a laundry list of questions coming into this thing. You know, who is Teddy Bridgewater? Can he do enough? I don't think we have those questions anymore. I think the questions now are, you know, with Darby out. With, uh, uh, Jerry, with Judy. Jerry Judy out uh, each for a couple of weeks, what does this Broncos team look like without those two guys? I, th I think those are the questions we have now. Yeah, the most immediate answer is Nate Hairston gets called up. Kendall Hinton gets called up from the practice squad. But you're 100% right. And this comes back to now where these are two position groups that the Broncos had a lot of depth at, mm. cornerback and wide receiver. A, a wide receiver, and you know we talked to James Palmer, and you can hear the interview at broncoscountrytonight.com. We talked to James Palmer and he said, you know, it's interesting because most of the time when you lose what you consider your best wide receiver, Jerry Judy would be in that conversation. It'd be devastating for a team. But you know what? Cortland Sutton is is a very capable Pro Bowl wide receiver that could be their wide receiver one. He wasn't that in this last game, but he can step into that role at any time. You have two really good tight ends. You've got Tim Patrick, who's filled in very nice as wide receiver two, and Kendall Hinton, or sorry, uh, K.J. Hamler, who's done good. And the same with the cornerbacks. You drafted a cornerback at number nine. So it's interesting that those are positions that I don't think the Broncos are panicking about. Do you think this could actually be a good thing for Teddy Bridgewater as it forces him to focus on his relationships and timing with Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, and K.J. Hamler? Three guys that... Uh, they're there, but he was mainly focused on Fant and Judy all throughout training camp and throughout that game. There's certainly something there. No, I, I, actually, it's, it's hard to disagree with that because he distributed the ball with nine different receivers, mm -hmm. caught passes, and, and I think that that continues to a certain extent. But, yeah, I mean, with, with Jerry Judy, there's a security blanket thing. That Now, that is not necessarily thing that you want to say while well, you're taking away the security blanket of a quarterback – but it does force him to say, okay, well, I have talent really everywhere across this lineup. 
I'm going to have to get the ball to these guys. And and people are going to step up. I mean, even when Jerry Judy went down in the game, you were at a position, you were inside the red zone, you needed other players to step up, and they did. And so that that's where I have a lot of confidence in this team because you saw guys, even with injuries happening, even things weren't going right, there was just a steadiness about him. You know, when Albert Okawebenam had the fumble right there at the goal line, how many years in the past would we have gone back and say, well, that's it, the Broncos are going to lose this game? And, and they would probably feel the same way, like, great, here we go. But you know what? They got a three and out on the defense. The Broncos offense got the back the ball back. They went forward on fourth and two in midfield. They got a touchdown right before halftime. That told me a lot about what this team is made of. Yeah, I think so. And, and like I said, I, I think that, you know, it's a bad thing when you lose a Jerry Judy, but I think it could be a good thing for this offense in the sense that you develop the trust and the timing with other guys that maybe, you know, you didn't quite have, you weren't on the same page, whatever, And but I got Judy, so I don't need to worry about that. Maybe it, it allows him to do that. Maybe this makes him a better team down the stretch. What about the secondary, losing Ronald Darby? That's going to hurt. Darby's got active hands. He, he probably played the best of the corners that were out there. Um, I, I thought he played really well in that game. Um, you know, I... I Sertan's a rookie, so they're going to challenge him. We're going to get to see what Pat Sertan's made of because he's going to be out there starting, and I promise you, they're going to go after him right away. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how he rises to that occasion against the number one overall draft pick and Trevor Lawrence coming up here against the Jags. And that that may be a little bit of I guess a slight silver lining as you are playing two rookie quarterbacks over the next two weeks. Now again, they're going to go after him. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's where we get a chance to look into the times that Pastor Tan went up against Trevor Lawrence. I don't know if he ever played against Zach Wilson, but Trevor Lawrence, we know he did. So that, that'll be something to kind of look at. But but more than anything, you get the opportunity, at least over a couple of games, to figure that out. And then you got the Ravens, who, yes, they, they, they have a very dynamic playmaker at quarterback, but he likes to do a lot more with his legs than he is the downfield threat guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I'm not saying that it's good news to lose Ronald Darby, but I'm saying the timing of it allows you to get some reps for Pastor Tan that he could probably use. Yeah, and, and I think that, uh, you know, it's a it's a blow to the Broncos secondary, but, you know, again, silver lining here. You gotta, you're gotta you going to get your rookie more snaps than six, the 16 snaps you got against the Giants. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, all around, you know, pretty good performance uh, across the board. I thought, I thought Pat Shermer had one of his best games uh, with the Broncos so far, and, and, and it makes you think just for a moment about, how things change with a new quarterback, what, how he can call a game different if he knows what the quarterback is going to do. I'm not going to turn this into an anti-Drew Locke kind of thing. I'm just going to say with Drew Locke, there was more of the variance, and I think that at times that did affect the way you could call a game. Yeah, I think that he was concerned with uh, – uh, well, I'll put it this way. He's been around Teddy Bridgewater before, knows what he's capable of, knows what he's not, and is able to, to work that. Being around – Pat Shermer's a guy who's always gone back to familiarity. I mean, the guy drags Sam Bradford with him to almost every job he ever had. Uh, so, you know, I, I kind of get where he's coming from. There's a familiarity. This is my guy. I like to work with this guy, that sort of thing. Um, I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna bag on Drew or anything not like that, but uh, Teddy went out and executed what was asked of him, and, and it made everybody look better for it. And you were a guy that was f- fairly critical of the decision. So where do you sit now? Oh, well, I started off skeptical. I would say I'm cautiously optimistic. Now, I want to see Teddy string together three or four games like this before I'm starting to invest in it. Uh, but th- th- he's on the right path. I mean, he's certainly doing the right things so far. I'm not going to write him off. Um, you know, I'm a little concerned. This is the best game he's ever played in his life. So, yeah. uh, you know, is that sustainable? Is this who he is? Who is Teddy Bridgewater? Is he the guy we've seen for five years previously with, with four different teams? Or is he this guy in this one game? Hopefully he's the guy in this one game. But like I said, I, I'm an evidence-based guy. Show it to me three or four, and then we buy he had it. the highest QBR of week one, right. 95.7. And again, you said it. He's got to do more than just play in one game, but it was against a good Giants defense. Mm-hmm. So for anybody that wants to say it was a bad opponent, maybe overall not a very good opponent with the Giants, but it was a bad, it was a very good Giants defense, and it was on the road. And and the, he had, along with the rest of the team, the weight of not winning in September, the weight of playing bad football early on the last two seasons. So I felt like the organization was feeling that mm. and and they obviously rose to the occasion. That's the part that I think that there's some sustainable stuff that they were able to do out there. I, I think that the maybe that you got to be a little bit better as running the ball. I know that's been a, your, a little bit of your frustration on the radio show is saying like, Hey, you got the 70 yarder for Melvin Gordon, but up to that point, it really wasn't pretty. Wasn't as effective as it needed to be. They got yardage where they, where they could. And, and, and ultimately they were okay because the pass game was, was shouldering the load. But in the end, you got to get more push in the run game. You got to be more dominant going downhill. Those, those eight minute drives passing the ball like that, not sustainable long-term in the NFL. Definitely. All right. Well, we'll uh, get after it this week talking about 
how the Broncos can get their second win of the season on the road against the Jacksonville Jaguars. For Benjamin Albright, I'm Ryan Edwards. Thanks for watching Broncos Country Tonight.